Folks, if you've been watching the news, you know it's time to step up your power preps. And today, I'm going to show you something that will help do just that. So let's get to it. Even if you casually are watching the news lately, you've heard a lot about these attacks that we're having on our grid, okay? If you've been watching the news, you know by now that Homeland Security has issued numerous warnings about possible attacks to the power grid. I believe it was back in January where they suggested they had intelligence of a coordinated destruction of power infrastructure, and the plotting of such attacks had been underway since around 2020. The bulletin stated that there were credible specific plans to attack electricity infrastructure, identifying the electric grid as a particularly attractive target given its interdependency with other infrastructure sectors. Now, on Christmas Day, we've had four Washington state power plants vandalized during all these different warnings. Now, I'm not getting into the who or the, you know, the why. I'm getting into the fact of it's happening. I'm not really interested in who's doing it or why they're doing it. I'm more interested in how I'm going to take care of myself should this happen where I live. And that's how you should look at it, too. Two people tend to get wrapped up in the, the minutia of the news of is, is it right-wingers, is it left-wingers, are they terrorists, are they foreign terrorists. Regardless of what all that is about, we want to think about what happens if we are stuck in the middle of one of these. Now, recently, we've had a bunch of people lose power in these winter storms. All right, we've got that storm blowing through half the country already. So it's important to think about backup power in those kinds of emergencies and even solar panels. Yes, solar panels will work in the snow. Sometimes, given the reflection of the snow underneath the, uh, underneath the panel, you'll even have it a little more efficient than normal. That's why I've chosen today to review this panel here, because it is kind of cloudy and crummy out, a little bit overcast, possible rain later in the day. So definitely time to start thinking about getting your backup power charged. And let's face it, AC power isn't always there for you to use. So I want to show you this panel. I've been using this to charge one of my power stations out here for a while now. Um, my larger Blue Eddy, and I have another one out here too that we've been using to charge up. This one is really cool. It's a 200 watt solar panel, 18 volts, it's foldable, has MC4 output, okay? So you can connect this to pretty much anything. As long as you have those MC4 connectors on one end, you can connect this to anything else that will accept that connector and take it to your particular power station or solar generator, whatever you want to call it. This also contains all the connectors you're going to need to connect to bunches of different types of solar panels on the uh, solar generators on the market. It has a bunch of the different adapters and connectors that will help you connect this to pretty much anything. You have MC4 to Anderson, MC4 to DC. There's, there's a bunch of different connectors in there, and I will show you that in a second. It is waterproof, it's very durable, and it is very safe. This foldable solar panel is constructed with durable, waterproof IP66 nylon. Does have an adjustable bracket, which I really, really like. I'm not a fan of the ones that come without brackets. And it can help your devices receive sunlight to recharge when there's no electrical grid present, even in adverse conditions. Let's open up the inside here. I want to show you all the connectors that are in it. And I'm going to tilt down the camera a little bit so we can see what's inside. All right, so we were talking about the, uh, the things here. These are the uh, adapters. Wow, that's some serious Velcro. These are your kickstands for the thing. But we're going to get in here. I want to show you what's in here. Okay, Let's open it up. Now, as you can see, you've got a bunch of different stuff in here. You do have your charger here. This is going to go right off your MC4 connectors to your uh, Anderson. We're going to try that one. Okay, this goes straight out of your solar panel. There's your MC4 connectors. This one will go into most of your power stations. Um, but if that tip is wrong for you, here's the cool part. I don't know why this one fell off. But there are a bunch of other tips on here that will work. I believe this one here will fit my Blue Eddy. We'll try it. Um, again, I have not tried it with these particular solar generators. I've tried it with other ones. And this panel is very efficient and works very well. Um, that's why we're testing it out today. Even in adverse conditions, I want to show you solar is not useless if you live in a rainy or kind of cloudy climate. It'll still work. Lastly is this guy here, which will take this straight into a battery. Okay, You can take this directly into a battery. I don't recommend that for uh, long-term use without, um, without uh, a charge control in between the two. But if you're doing this into a LifePo4 battery, there is a battery management system inside of them. It's just a better idea to have a charge control. But if you need to start your car up 
all right? Or if you're running, say, a couple of radios in your car and your car is parked with it off, this can definitely help you out a whole lot. So that's the story on what's inside of this. You do have this little cable here that comes out. And these are very stiff, firm cables. I, I got all the twisty ties off them. These are very decent, beefy cables. So they're not, they're not going to give you a hard time with anything. They're not going to fall apart on you, okay? So you do have the solar panel. You have the 5.5 by 2.5 uh, 2 millimeter cable, the MC4 to Anderson, the DC 8 millimeter adapter, uh, 3.5 adapter, 3.5 cable, uh, 5.5 cable, instruction manual, which is here, and very, very simple. And they do give you 18 months of customer service in case you have any kind of issues. All right. The specs on this, you got 18 volts maximum power output. Okay. 11 amps. Your solar charge conversion rate is 19 to 22%, which is fairly decent. Um, I've had some that are up to 23%. That's not, that's pretty good, but that's actually pretty decent. Operating temperature, uh, let's see, minus four degrees to 140 Fahrenheit or minus 20 to 60 Celsius. The size on this, okay, 87 inches by 25 inches, okay, and that is a fairly compact package coming in at 13.9 pounds or 6.3 kilograms for those of you that use the metric system. So it's definitely a handy little system. What we're going to do today is put it outside and see how well it does react because remember, we are in a cloudy condition today. I want to see how well this does work with cloudy weather outside. So let me set it up outside. I'll show you how it's set up, and then we'll try and see what we're pulling in on it. So just to give you a quick look at the conditions we're dealing with, a pretty heavy cloud cover. The sun is trying to break through. It's funny since I set up the panel, the sun is actually really trying to break through up there. Um, but this is where we have it set up, and we are casting that nice long shadow. I do eventually want to get a... Uh, an alignment tool that clips on the end that will help you align this in ideal solar conditions. But for now, I just use the shadow to kind of tell me. And it's really funny because as you can see, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but the sun seems to be coming out. But it is kind of an overcast, cloudy, we forecast rain today. So for those of you that think that solar won't work because you live in an environment where um, the sun doesn't shine all the time, nothing could be further from the truth. It will work. All right, let me get my power meter out and try power meter first. Then we're going to connect a solar generator to it or a power station and see how efficient it is. All right, so I have it connected right over here. And it's getting me 21 volts. It's rated for 18, so I'd say it's doing pretty good already, even in this crummy, cloudy kind of weather out here, although the sun is desperately trying to get through those clouds. So what we're going to do now is take this inside, not take the panel inside, take the cords inside, and I'm going to connect it to a uh, power station and see what we're getting in as far as wattage. The bolts are 21.4 right out here right now. So let's see what we're getting in as far as wattage goes and see how well this can recharge, even on a cloudy day, a decent sized power station. All right, so remember, we are in cloudy conditions right here. You can see the sun trying to peek through there. There's some serious heavy cloud cover up there. I do have it plugged in and we are only getting 32 watts out of it, but when people say it will never work or it doesn't work at all, that's just proof that it does. It will work. Um, again, you will get lower performance from it. So what we're going to do is leave it out here and hope that the uh, cloud cover moves away because the wind's a little high today, so it might move some of the clouds out of the way. And we'll see if we can get it at a higher performance. But I just want to show you guys, even on a cloudy day, a small panel or a large panel will do the trick. I want to show you how this connects quickly, too. This is your connection there from inside. There's your MC4 connectors, and I did have to use the adapter here. That middle adapter that I thought would go into this blue eddy. There you go. So you see, it is working. So we're going to give it a little time here, and hopefully that cloud cover will pass and uh, see if it picks up any. All right, now as you can see, the sun's starting to peek through. And of course, it turned off on me, but we've got 69 watts. 71. See, it's not worthless. People will think that because, you know, you're in a an area that doesn't get a lot of sun, that solar is worthless. This panel is pretty darn efficient too, because believe me, you are not getting that kind of sun off any other panel. We've already gone up one level. It was at one bar, now it's at two bars, 77%. This has been about half an hour. So it's not gonna be super fast, but hey, look, we're almost at 100 watts on a very cloudy, overcast, crummy day. 
And a very efficient panel. This All Powers panel is really doing a good job for such a uh, cloudy day. All right, let's give it a little more time. So now we're up to 87 watts, or 86. Um, I don't know if you can hear it on the mic. Now that I'm using a, a lavalier mic, it's probably not as bad. But it's very, very windy out here. Um, this is held up to the wind fine. No issues. As you can see, the sun is really starting to, to peak out more. So we're going to let this run a little bit more and show you what we can get it up to. Now, again, I don't expect this to get anywhere near 200 watts today. But it just shows you that, you know, having a solar panel, think about it. Would you rather have a dead power station or at least a power station charging up at around 83 watts? You know, given that, I'd rather, much rather have the, uh, the 80 watt recharging capability here. And uh, on sunny days, have this thing up to about 180. So what I wanted to do here quickly is give you a quick walk around of the panel itself. Let's see what it looks like from the front. There you go. Okay. So it is a fairly large panel. And again, I got it up to about 122 um, in the bright sun. And now it's back down to 70 because the sun is behind the clouds again. So you can see what it's set up out here. Unfortunately, I didn't catch that on camera. But I did get it up that high. So I'm pleased with it. And this is, this is what I like about it. This is a real world test, you know. I'm not coming out here on a bright, sunny day and showing you, oh, look at this, it does 180 watts and ending the video. I'm showing you how it'll work in real-world conditions if things are not optimal and you're still getting decent power in there. So I'm going to bring it inside and we'll finish up the video. So what do I think? Well, I got to say I'm impressed. Um, even in suboptimal conditions, this thing still got over 100, 115 watts. It was like 121. Um, got to say... Did its job and for those people that are kind of on the fence on solar um running your whole house on solar yeah on a day like today you'd probably have to be a little careful about what you use but charging up solar panels charging up uh, power stations perfect i mean at least you're getting something in and that's the point of having backup solar um, it's to keep yourself powered up and running and safe so i gotta say i'm impressed with it now another neat thing about this is it's a folding solar panel and it's 200 watts. Normally, they start out in the three to four hundred dollar range, especially for more of the better named brands. This one, and All Powers is a good brand. I've used their. I'm still using one of their power stations. Um, they are a very decent brand. I really like their their gear. Um, they have a sale right now. There's a coupon on Amazon. Okay, I can't guarantee how long that coupon is going to be there. It may not even still be there. But underneath the price, the price they put on this is two seventy five zero one. dollars Underneath the price is a coupon that you click in a little checkbox. You're going to click that, and you're going to save 70 bucks off it. So this is around $200 a watt for a folding solar panel. That's pretty darn good. You know, the rigid fixed panels, they're about a dollar a watt now. But the folders are still a little bit more expensive because there's a little bit more technology that goes into making them. So I got to say for all in all, the test I did, and I love testing it today because it wasn't optimal conditions and it showed you the real world of what a solar panel will do when it's cloudy. Even a 200 watt one is going to struggle to get up to 200 watts or 180 or 175 because it's not perfect sun conditions, but it did work and it worked fairly well. So I do think now is the time to get out there, get your solar panel somewhere where you think it'll work well. Check out your property. You know, maybe you live in an apartment and you're on the 10th floor and you got a balcony and that's the only place you can put it. Well, that's the only place you can put it. But if you have a home, if you have land, you can walk around, kind of look and see where it's brightest, where the sun comes down. And through most of the day where I live, the sun will come up this way and set that way. So if I want to catch only the evening sun, I'm going to put my panels this way. But if I want to catch the most during the day, I'm going to put them sideways like this. And we're going to get into that because I'm going to be redoing the other side of my workstation here. And we're going to be running some solar panels in. We're going to set up a little communication station. That's in a future video. Um, I'm going to be moving around the, the my personal home backup solar. And uh, I'll show you all that when I do it. That's just a project video. It'll be kind of fun to watch. Uh, but um, I think this is a good deal. I think it's a really handy panel. I think it's not too huge for a 200-watt panel. I've tested a few other 200-watt panels from bigger companies. And they are gigantic. This is a whole lot smaller. 
yet it does seem to do the job. And it's only 13.9 pounds, so around 14 pounds. So for you boondockers, you RVers, bus people, car campers, anything like that, definitely a handy panel you can set right outside of your vehicle, charge up your power stations, and be on your way without setting anything up permanently. Definitely a cool deal. So like I said, you're going to get 70 bucks off with the coupon that's on Amazon. I'm not responsible for that coupon. That's on Amazon. When it disappears, it disappears. I always hate when they give me a coupon or a code and it doesn't work or it's not there or it's not right. This one is on Amazon. They're putting it up. They put it up there on sale. You can check it out below. I'll put a link to it directly. I also will put it in my store. You can check that out as well. Underneath that, we will have the link to our whole store. And by the way, folks, if you're interested in helping out the channel, all I ask you to do is use that link and shop as you normally would. You don't have to do anything special. Below that's our freeze-dried wholesalers link. Um, you guys have seen me do freeze-dried wholesaler videos for a couple, couple years now. I definitely believe in their stuff, and my link will save you 15% just by clicking it. So if you want to get stocked up on food, on 25-year shelf life freeze-dried food with a huge variety, everything from filet mignon to cheesecake, I tell people, that's definitely the place to go. Below that's our My Patriot Supply link. I consider that a good deal for new preppers. If you're looking to get three months worth of food and save 250 bucks off the package, you can go right there, get that package, $250 off for a three month supply. It's a large amount of food, trust me. It comes in, a, I think it's six or seven buckets. Uh, we also have a three week kit there, a four week kit, I'm sorry, for $50 off. There's a two week kit there for some money off. And My Patriot Supply has a ton of cool prep stuff. So definitely check them out and see what's there. Um, click on the links, you know, on my, my personal page, preparewithiridium.com, um, you will click on one of the food links and just go and you can go to the site and see all the other stuff they have. Below that is our Thrive Life freeze-dried food store. Those are the three companies that I put my trust in as far as my own personal preps. Uh, freeze-dried wholesalers, my Patriots, Supply, and Thrive Life. Uh, good stuff all the way around. And with Thrive, there is no need to join anything. You can always just click a link and try some stuff out. Trust me, when you try it, the hype will be justified. It's really good, clean, freeze-dried food. Anyway, folks, thank you for spending some time with me. I thank you for joining me on this real-world test of a 200-watt solar panel. And I got to say, the All Powers did what it was supposed to do. It did very, very well. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. And stay safe and stay prepared.